So, this is my custom 3D printer called Tesseract. It is a big format printer with a print size of 400 by 400 by 450 millimeters. It also features a fully custom tool changer, segmented heat bed, linear rails on one axis, and much more. But it is definitely not perfect. As it is my first ever attempt at not only building but designing a 3D printer, it has a lot of first time errors. Good example are the DC heat beds for a bed this size, the lack of belt tensioning, the original design, and many more. You could honestly make an hour long documentary talking about all the large and small errors I made along the way with this printer. Errors which have resulted in lost time, money, and many, many headaches. But out of all the design flaws, the biggest, most annoying, and apparently most difficult to fix has got to be the Z-axis. So, originally, the Z-axis looked much different than what it looks like now. The first design was much more budget-oriented. It consisted of two linear rods and a lead screw per axis module, and also the original design had a system that allowed non-planar printing. The first thing to go was that system. After some thought, I realized that with almost no support for non-planar printing, plus the position error that it caused, it was not worth the trouble that it is. So, after that was gone, the accuracy of the system had increased, but there was an issue. You can see here that the rods bent, the 3D printed bases, and that led to a lot of wobble on the bed, which was definitely not ideal. Now, to fix this issue, I really couldn't think any other way other than ditching the linear rods and swapping them for linear rails on all the axes. A pricey upgrade, but a worthwhile one. Swapping the rails eliminated any kind of wobbling on the bed and made for a much better Z-axis. But of course, after that, another problem had to come up. While the bed was moving up and down, I could hear a horrible sound coming from the screws. Apparently, they were grinding on the nut so hard that metal shavings would fall on the stepper motors. At that point, I realized that the lead screws were next to go. But what to replace them with? While the correct option would be ball screws, they were a bit more expensive than I would have liked to have spent at that point. So, the only other option was belts, which in hindsight was a regrettable decision. For the belt-driven Z-axis, I made a 4 to one reduction with belts similar to the Voron 2.4 and then used a 10mm GT2 belt to move the bed. Now, this system was definitely better than the lead screws, but it had problems of its own. First of all, since the bed was really heavy, even with the belt reduction, the bed would lose its ramming when the motors would deactivate. But the worst and more unexplainable problem would be what made this video come to life. For some reason, the Z-axis just sucked. There were lots of Z-artifacts and even lost steps that could be noticed in prints. Now, with this system, the printer can and did produce many parts, but prints that were tall had very noticeable printing artifacts, which were unacceptable for such a pricey printer. Prints like plates and signs that mostly use the X and Y would come out looking great with almost no issues, but any print that had any height, uh, you could see very noticeable issues. So, how do we go about to fix this issue? Well, the reason I used belts for the Z-axis was due to the price of the ball screws, but now I really couldn't see any other way around it. So, I guess it's time to buy some ball screws. Originally, I was gonna get some 1605s from a local serial, but those would cost about 300 euros, and I don't know if I'm willing to spend that much. Quick note on ball screw nomenclature. Normally, ball screws have a four digit number in their name. If you split that number into two two-digit numbers, the first one is the diameter of the screw and the other is the pitch of the screw or the distance it will travel in one rotation. So for a 1605, that means the screw has a diameter of 16mm and a pitch of 5. 16mm is a bit too much for a 3D printer and is more suitable for CNC machines. So with a bit more digging, I found some 1204 ball screws that seem to be a better fit for the printer and only cost about 150 euros, which I could definitely stomach. Now, let's talk a bit about the problems with ball screws. Most budget ball screws are made with a technique called rolling. The result is very hard and durable threads, but also most likely not very even ones. Lead screws can bend a bit under pressure, which lets them conform to the print bed and don't result in that much bed wobble, but that is not the case with ball screws. Since most ball screws are not only rolled, but also have a large diameter, if they are not perfectly even, they can bend the entire bed assembly, which results in a very noticeable Z-wobble. To resolve this issue, you would have to let the ball screw move in the X and Y axis without affecting the bed. To do that, I will use a part designed by fellow YouTuber Mirage C called the Wobble X. Mirage C not only designed the Wobble X, but is also the designer of the Hevor 3D printer, which was a big inspiration for my printer. 
If you want to know more about the Wobble X, its design process and more about the issues with ball screws, I will link his video down below. I suggest you watch it and give him a like and subscribe for all his amazing work. Now let's put it all together and get it into the printer. So to begin assembly we first have to install the small rods that came with the Wobble X into the Z axis 3D printed parts. To hold them all in place I put a little bit of cyanoacrylate glue to make sure they would never come out during printing. Next step is to install the stepper motor mounts at the bottom of the printer. After that the couplers are installed on the stepper motors and everything is screwed in and we can now start preparing the ball screws. One important thing to talk about with ball screws is that in comparison to lead screws taking the ball nut off the threads is something no one can recommend. Considering that if you make this mistake the little ball bearings are all going to get misaligned and putting the ball nut back on by hand after that is nearly impossible so not recommended. To avoid this fate we first screw the bottom half of the wobble X mount on the ball nut on these screws here before bringing it over to the printer. We then proceed to screw in the ball screw in the coupler and then put the wobble X on and then place the bed mounting parts on the wobble X and screw them into the linear rails. Here we can see two metal rods that are used for a big ball bearing to ride on which is what links the bed assembly to the Z axis mounts. Without this ball bearing the Z axis jams frequently due to misalignment of the three carriers. With this ball bearing in place all that holds the bed down is gravity and the three carriers can move independently without any risk of jamming and the bed slides along the rods when tramming. Finally we place the bearing mount on top of the ball screws to constrain ball screw movement. And we're done. In terms of software all we need to do is go to our clipper config file and change the rotation distance of the Z axis to match our new ball screws which is with a pitch of 4mm results to a rotation distance value of 4. After the assembly and software changes we can do some test prints and see if we can notice a difference. Right from the get go before the print even starts we can notice that the bed no longer loses its tramming when the motors are unpowered which is one of the reasons behind this upgrade in the first place. Now it is not necessary to mesh level and tram the bed before every print which saves a lot of time and hassle. Also noticeable is that the new system makes a bit more noise than the previous one but only when manually moving the bed at a fast speed. During printing the Z system is silent compared to the noise that the X and Y axis makes. Now let's test it out. For a test print I used this Z wobble test print in vase mode with a one layer perimeter. So what does this tell us? Well a few things actually. Firstly we can tell that there is still some observable Z wobble. We can confirm this by measuring the distance between the artifacts and see that it matches the pitch of the ball screws of 4mm. I think that this is caused by the plastic couplers that are connecting the ball screws to the stepper motors and that play in their connection causes so much wobble that the wobble X can't correct for. Another thing we can notice is that for some reason there are way more artifacts on the X axis compared to the Y axis. For this I don't really have an explanation right now and all I can say is that it's probably not related to the Z axis which makes the problem for another day. So while there are clearly still issues with the Z axis it's definitely better than the belt driven one considering the old Z axis had way worse wobble and even compressed layers with even the correct uh, rotation distance. I am looking for proper couplers but since my ball screws don't have middle ends getting a proper coupler has been an issue. When I get new ones I will post an update to whether that fixes the remaining Z wobble. So is this upgrade worth it? Well I'm not sure if I can answer that. On one hand I do believe my printer is better off with this upgrade but it is by no means cheap. Also I believe that ball screws only make sense if you have a large printer with a heavy Z axis. Most printers that have to lift a light Z axis should be fine with normal lead screws and spending ball screw money doesn't make much sense for that. However if you have a very large printer like this one and money to throw around then ball screws aren't a bad way of going about things. They make for a very sturdy and repeatable system and with the use of the wobble X most if not all of the issues of cheap ball screws disappear leaving you with probably the best Z axis that one can hope for for a 3D printer. So I think that's about it. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video I hope you leave a like and subscribe to see any future videos and updates about this system and more upgrades in general to this printer and future builds or any other projects that I might tackle. That's all for now. Thanks for being here and goodbye.